Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Daniel James. And if you're new here, welcome. As always, if you take any value from today's episode, please don't forget to like and share with a friend. Help us get the information out there to help as many people as possible. But I've got a question for you. Do you focus on problems or do you focus on solutions? A lot of the time, we focus so much on the problems that we have in our life that if I were to ask you, well, how would you want your life to look? You don't have an answer. So therefore, we're not creating any sort of solutions. If we're not creating any sort of solutions and we're just focusing on the problem, we're going to get stuck in that problem and things aren't going to get better. It sounds simple, but we need to just take a step back. And rather than getting so involved in the problem, ask ourselves, what solution would I like? What would I li want my life to actually look like? If you've never gave any thought to what you want your life to look like, how are you ever going to be able to move towards that? You're not. And it's easy to get drawn into the problems. Because if we're focused on the problem, more problems are going to become a result of that, going to come because of a result of that. It's a thing in our brain called the reticular activating system. And essentially, it's the filter that our brain uses so we know what's important, what's not important. Now, you've all used this at some point. If you've ever played the yellow car game, where you're in the car with mates and you've got to try and spot a yellow car, if you spot it and you say it, you get to punch your mates. That's your reticular activating system. What you're doing is you're saying, brain, show me yellow cars. And it just focuses out all the other stuff and it shows you the yellow cars. Or if you've gone to get a new car yourself or a new pair of trainers or um, your favorite football team jersey, you will see that everywhere. It's always been there, but it's just something that's important to you. If you ever bought a new car, that's really important to you. So you start to see it everywhere. So if you're just constantly fixated on problems, you're telling the brain, I want to find more problems. So even if you solve that initial problem and you go back to quote unquote homeostasis, back to normality, you've told your brain you want more problems. You like problems. So then guess what? You will create more problems in your life or you'll find more problems. Or you just a situation will happen and you'll try and like force this problem out of it. Maybe in a relationship. Like if you've constantly been used to these negative relationships, when things start to go good, oh, I don't want to do with this. I want to try and find some problems here. I want to find something to talk about. I want to find something to have an argument about. Do you look for problems or solutions? Solutions for me is having a compelling future to move yourself towards. What do you want your life to look like? And then the question you have to ask is, do you actually want to change? Because in order for you to get a different life, you have to become a different person. The person that you are right now has created the life that you've got, or future you, sorry, past you to be precise, past you has created the life that you've got right now. So if you want to create a compelling future, if you want to have a brighter future, if you want to have a different future, the you right now has got to start making choices that will lead to that successful future. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, please smash that thumbs up button. It helps with YouTube algorithm to get the video out there to help more people that may need to hear this message. If you don't want to miss any future episodes, hit that subscription button. And now back to the episode. It's about taking responsibility for our life. The past may not have been your fault, but your future and the present moment right now is your responsibility. It's time to take a step back from the problems and ask ourselves, is this actually what I want? If the answer is no, who do I need to become to start to live the life that I actually want? And if you don't know what kind of life you want to have, sit down and just write, just free write for 15, 20 minutes. What do you want? And most of the time, people won't even be able to give me an answer for this. If I ask them, what do you want? I don't know. Okay, we'll start by writing down the things that you don't want. Because once you've got a list of all the things you don't want, you can then reverse engineer it and it'll give you a list of the things that you do want. It gives you a bit of a clearer thing. And then you take this list and you basically turn it into a future. Take all these things and just write it out. My life will look like this and I will have this and I'll be living with this and da da da. Okay, now you've got that. Brilliant. Now we've got this thing we want. Who do you need to become in order to make that a reality? What decisions do you need to make? How does your thinking need to change? Because remember, the outcomes in your life come from your thoughts. Your thoughts lead to your feelings and your emotions. Your emotions lead to your actions. Your actions lead to the results, which then confirm to you the identity in the life that you're living. And as I mentioned before, someone challenged me and said, yeah, but sometimes your feelings and emotions, they can lead to your thoughts. 
absolutely can. But your baseline levels of feelings and emotions, your emotional home, as it were, that comes from your past thoughts. Your past thoughts, through repetition, have led to the beliefs, which then lead to your feelings and emotions, that emotional home that you've got. So if you want to change that emotional home, if you want to change that homeostasis point that your body has, if you want to change that thermostat of your life, it starts with thoughts. It starts with you taking control of your thoughts and realize that every single time a negative thought pops up and you get drawn into that negativity, you get drawn into the problems and you notice it and you replace that with a positive, empowering thought that is you taking back control and that is you working on rewiring your brain. You reworking the neural pathways in your brain and it takes time. But just like when you're in a gym, you do one rep, two reps and over time your physique will start to change same thing when that negativity pops in as soon as you realize and you flip it with a positive that's you doing a rep and the more you start to do that the more it will start to become automatic and the weaker and weaker and weaker this negativity will become when you notice that you're there in the problems start to question them is this really a problem or is this just a story that i've told myself is this a story that i'm creating what are the facts? What are the facts? And the facts are, you may be stuck in the problems because you didn't know there was another way out. And over years, maybe decades, of focusing on the problems, you've trained yourself to find more problems. But the facts are, you can change that. The truth is, you can change that. But it takes time, it takes effort, and it takes a desire to want to do it to show up day after day after day and noting that you're going to have some bad days. And when you do, you get up, dust yourself off and go on the road again. Take one day at a time. Don't focus on the problems. Focus on the solution. Ask yourself, what do you want and who do you need to become in order to get that in your life? Till next time, take it easy.